Let me text her while we're talking. But you can listen to their services as well. And you can get to knowing what's going on with them as well. So you can listen to the three play buttons, 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. KJI, uh, 95 Fight the Fish from Cleveland, Ohio. KJIC out of Texas. And my former church, Evangel Christian Churches. And soon will be Portage Community Chapel. Hold on just for a minute. And so you can listen to those and you can do a Google search result at the bottom of the play buttons page. Just go to the very bottom page of the play buttons page. Click on the safe search, the Google search bar. And when you click on the Google search bar, type in your search query and hit the virtual go on your keyboard. On your virtual keyboard, hit go. Or on your physical keyboard, hit the go or the enter button. Whatever it is, do that. Because if you go to where the hour, the magnifying glass is, the, the, the usually is for search, it's covered up by the email button. So you're clicking the email button and you're not going to do a Google search result. So hit the virtual go on your virtual keyboard or on your physical keyboard, hit the go or the enter button if you're using Chrome OS. And the app is called Podcast Portal. And it's exclusively on Android with the exclusively on the Google Play Store, exclusively on the uh, um, Amazon App Store and the App Toy Market. So get the app out there, guys. Enjoy yourself. And I put Safe Search on there and I tested it and everything. I looked up some, uh, some inappropriate items that I did not want to look up, but I had to to make sure it worked. And of course, it works. There's nothing that popped up. I looked up all kinds of search results and I didn't see no inappropriateness because I created this app not for someone to go, hmm, it, it can do a Google search. My wife thinks it's a Christian app. I can look at all this stuff. It doesn't save any of my history. I can do anything I want to. My wife will not know. Oh, I can't wait to look up these girls later on when she's sleeping. That's not why I created it for. I created it for you to be encouraged you to be blessed, and for you guys to what? To just have fun. It's not meant for sin. It's not meant to be used and abused. It's for us to bring the Word of God to you each and every week. So I looked up some stuff. I didn't want to have to, but I had no choice. I had to make sure it works. I didn't want to go on there, Chris, and not test anything, and then two weeks later, someone's going, well, It's my son and daughter had your app and they were looking at some really... Why would you let that happen on your app? Well, I didn't let it happen. It just happened. So I tested it first. And I made sure it it worked the way it's supposed to. Because God, whenever whenever he created something, he always made sure it worked first. And it worked no matter what. Because God always makes everything that works. God never fails at anything. But I made sure it worked and it does. So you can do that as well. And the final thing you can do on the portal on the podcast portal is the new portal chat feature where you can chat with not only just the host but the co-host and all of the listeners who own this app. You guys can chat with each other. So go ahead, download that app, then start chatting with us. Chat during the messages and start talking between each other about the word. Like when I say God loves you. Start talking about that. Start talking about things that God did in your life to show you his love. We want to hear all about that. We want you to be prevalent on that. We want you to we want to hear all about what's going on with that there. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and chat with everyone and talk about the word. Talk about what we're talking about. Get that conversation going on because we're two or more gathered here in my in the midst. So go ahead and chat with us on the portal chat as well. And that does. Finally, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Conclude our announcements. Amen. (laughs) Amen is right. Because we have to happen sometimes where we get into this word and then the next thing you know it, it's going fuzz on us. And it just goes, and it blips out. And I tell you not, and uh, let me tell you, when I click back on here, because when I'm usually live on the show, there's two things to happen. Number one, my Spreaker, my Spreaker studio 
has a dot in the corner of the uh, of the icon because it lets you know that it's being used or that there's a notification. And now that that's being used, it's for it's being used. And in the corner of my computer, when I bring up the time, it shows that I am. It says Spreaker Studio, thirty six seventeen on the air. You're live on Spreaker, so it shows that I'm live. But when I went to go, uh, when it clicked out on us, once in a while it will it will shut down. It won't shut down, but it will close the screen. It will still be live, so I thought it was because the dot was still there. It was still showing a dot on the the uh, Spreaker icon. So when I went to go click on it, I started buffering and buffering, and then I noticed it wasn't even there. It wasn't recorded. It wasn't live. It was nothing. I checked in every platform. There was nothing going on. It was nothing there. It was like I never even did it. So I'm gonna check on YouTube again later on to see if it's still if it's if it was recorded there or not. But I don't think it was, and so I had to reshut my whole computer because, like I like I was trying to say to Chris, my computer was freezing, was it not, Chris? Yes. Oh, it was freezing bad. It was really a bad. But one thing's good. I'm glad that it wasn't recorded. I'm glad that it wasn't. Don't get me wrong. I, we don't have to. We didn't want to not want to have to do the announcements again, but. It's easier when it's not recorded rather than trying to take two recordings and chop them in certain spots and piece them back together. It's a whole lot easier we can restart again. Don't get me wrong. I didn't want that to happen. But it's better for this way because now we can go back and redo this, but we don't have to worry about it being pieced together and then something else messing up. It's an easy shot. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. We prayed like three times the devil leaves us alone. Because we're going to get this word out to you guys, and we're going to preach this word. Because why? Because it's fun. And we need, and we, we love preaching it to you guys. We love giving you the divine love of God. We love, love, love giving out the word. Because it, it goes to show that not only do we love you guys, but we love God. And that's the main goal. It's to... Not prove that we're saved, but just show you that we're saved by what we do for God. And that you can do that for other people. You can, you can show people that you mean business by what? Doing for God. How did Jesus show that he meant business? He died on the cross. Because <clears throat> what does the Bible say, Chris? Does the Bible say that Jesus went and he, he struggled with the people and then got nailed? Or did he go freely? Amen. Freely. Therefore, same thing. He went freely. Therefore, it's the same thing. He loved God that much that he just did it. He didn't think twice. He didn't say no. He did say if this, you know, if this be a will, it's come past for me. But he did it out of love for for Father, and that's what we do. We get out there, and he proved. While we were yet sinners. Yes, and hold on to that one just for a minute. (laughs) Oh, man, I'm loving you right now, but hold on for a minute. You're going to see why I say that in just a minute, because we're about to get into a song. But he showed showed that he meant business by doing that. And we show that we mean business by what? Getting the word out there, showing the love of Christ to others. Because anybody to the blue in the face can say they believe in God. And the world's going to take one look at you and laugh at you. But if you mean business and you sit there and you say, look, I know you're going to laugh at me, but I love Jesus. And Jesus loves me and he loves you. Even though, yes, they might laugh at you. But think about this. If you're persistent and persistent and persistent, they're going to be like, look, I don't believe in God. And I, I'm just annoyed by what you're doing. But you know what? I commend you. You mean business. They're going to respect you in that way because you're persistent about what you believe. They're going to say, like, you must really believe in that and that he, they like, I commend you for it because you you really out there are trying to mean business. Even though I may not believe in who Jesus is, but I still commend you for it because you're out there doing what you, you're out there trying to do what you're trying to do and I commend you for it. And that's the way people look at you. They may not believe what you believe. Just because we preach it doesn't mean that everyone will come to Christ. But they will still look at you in a different light and actually respect you for that. Because why? Because you're doing what you're doing. You're meaning business. 
And that's what God does. God did that. Jesus died to show who he meant business. That he meant business. When he said, I'm going to eradicate the death, hell, and the grave. And sin. When he said, I'm going to eradicate that, the devil laughed at him. But when he went and died on that cross, he showed him business. He showed him that he meant business. And he showed him who was boss. That devil said no when he rose from that grave. I guarantee you, he when he rose from that grave, he was screaming, no, he's supposed to be dead. Because if you think about it, there's, a, there's an old, there's an old uh, gospel singer who recently died. His name was Carmen. You ever heard of Carmen, Chris? No. He was, he, he was good. Look up Carmen. He, he has some records out back in the day. He does old school, like nothing but the blood of Jesus. And he has um, other messages he preached too. He had a whole ministry. One of his messages, I loved it, was uh, Holy Roller. Oh, no, it was Bipolar. It was, uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, I can't remember now. I lost my train of thought, but it was, uh, it was one of the disciples, but it was like, uh, it was a uh, Bipolar Holy Roller or something like that. And he preached a word about that. And it was a really good message. But one of his songs that he did was called The Champion. Look that up. The Champion, The Courtroom, were two favorite pieces by him. But in the middle of The Champion, it's all about Jesus and, and, and Satan duking it out in a boxing ring, rumbling again. And he says in the, in the song, he goes, and the devil just blew, took him and knocked him out. And then the devil's all, the devil and his angels are all cheering, and the next thing you know, it's, the the uh, umpire, not the umpire, but the guy in the striped uniform. What's that called again? The referee. The referee comes by and he gets on his knees and he goes, 10, 9, 8. He goes, wait a minute. No, he's counting backwards. 7. He gets down to 1. He's alive. And he gets back up and he, he goes, no, he's alive. Ah, and it's the greatest song ever. I love it. It brings me to tears when I hear this song. But that's the way it is. Jesus is never ever, ever, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Normal. He does things differently. Like when they said he started counting backwards from 10 to 0. That's the way Jesus is. He's never, he's always out of the ordinary. That's why we as Christians, Chris, are very eccentric people. Because we believe in an in a eccentric God who has never... People think we're weird, but we're not. I mean, people thought Jesus was weird. Yes. When he, was, when he was alive, that Jesus was weird. I mean, there's a lot of things that they thought about that guy, but we're not weird. We're normal. They're weird. So with that being said, it's one of the greatest things, but it just goes to show that Jesus is never, ever, ever... Uh, I lost my train of thought again. He's never normal. He always does things out of the ordinary to prove a point. It just God happens. works in mysterious ways. Absolutely. It's like, what's the first thing he did to Pilate? For, well, let me say it this way. What could have Jesus did to Pilate when Pilate asked him, they say that you're the son of God. Okay? They say you're the son of God. Who are you? What could have Jesus done? He could have said, yep, I'm the son of God. Sure, see? Poof, here you go. You want, you want miracle money in your, in your bank? Or whatever they had back then? Poof. You want me to raise? Oh, here, here's your daughter. Whoosh. Or your son. I rose him from the dead. See, I'm Jesus. He could have. But no, he was eccentric. What did Jesus say to Pilate? Do you remember what he said to Who Pilate? Who do you say that I am? Right. He was eccentric. He was out of the norm. He says, who do you say that I am? It's like, it's like when, when Jesus asked Peter, and he says, well, men say that you're this, and you're Elijah, and that you're, you know, John the Baptist. And he goes, Peter, who do you say that I am? He says, you're the son, the Christ, the son of the living God. So in both areas, he was eccentric and out of the norm. He could have very well went to Paul and said, I'm Jesus, and proved to him that moment that he was Jesus. And that could have brought Pilate to his knees. But he was eccentric. He says, who do you say that I am? And the very next thing that happened when Pilate got out there with Jesus in handcuffs, 
where he said,